decades, Russian billionaires have been buying up super mansions, doing business, and making London awash with money without anyone battering an eyelid as to where the money stems from. The UK government has seemingly turned a blind eye. So with recent events with Russia invading Ukraine and sanctions being put on beyond wealthy oligarchs, it is now being investigated as to where all the money was generated from. In today's video, we will be taking a look at what is a Russian oligarch, where a lot of their money was generated from, and did money laundering have anything to do with it? Hello, and welcome to another KYC Lookup video where we bring you AML-related content to help you enhance your knowledge in the fight against money laundering. Before diving into today's video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Oh, and don't forget to leave us a comment with any suggested topics you would like us to cover in the future. We also have a special announcement to make, so be sure to watch until the end to find out what it is. So, on to today's video. What is an oligarch? Russian oligarchs are business owners of the former Soviet republics who rapidly accumulated wealth during the era of Russian privatization in the aftermath of the dissolution of the Soviet Union in the 1990s. The word oligarch comes from the Greek word oligarchia and is formed from oligo, meaning few, and arch, meaning ruler or leader. The same ending is used for monarch. The word oligarch does not imply a specific political doctrine or philosophy. Instead, it's based on the fact that only a few powerful people control things. What makes an oligarch? A business group or person might be defined as an oligarchy if it satisfies all of the following conditions. The owners of the business are the largest private owners in the country. It possesses significant political power to promote its own interests. Owners control multiple businesses, which intensively coordinate their activities. How do oligarchs make their money? When the Soviet Union fell in the 1990s and industries became privatised, a handful of Russian businessmen quickly snapped up industries that they knew would generate huge amounts of wealth, primarily in the industrial, energy and financial sector. A lot of the time, these business grabs were made at a loss to the companies being sold or were made through unethical exchanges. Let's take a look at an example. One of the most well-known Russian oligarchs would have to be Roman Abramovich. Starting life in very humble beginnings, Abramovich was raised by his mother up until the age of four, when he was made an orphan and was sent to live with his grandparents in a Serbian town 700 miles from Moscow. Growing up was very tough, and after leaving school he spent a short time in the Soviet army before moving into the toy making and automobile parts cooperative. After many years, Abramovich moved into the financial sector and started trading commodities in Runicom, a Swiss trading company. Abramovich attributes much of his success to the patronage of oil magnate Boris Berezovsky, who introduced him to Boris Yeltsin's inner circle. After making his way up the trading and oil industries, and after Berezovsky fell out with the Vladimir Putin regime, Roman Abramovich took over Berezovsky's assets and the country's largest television network. Abramovich's empire continued to grow and has now become one of Russia's richest men. Is the oligarch's money generated through money laundering? Keeping tight-lipped about Russian tycoon's source of wealth has been an open secret for a very long time. And even though no one says the money flowing through London or other very sought after cities comes from illicit proceeds, all arrows point to yes. It is very well known that shell companies have been used to buy hugely expensive properties, or super mansions as they are also known as. And as shell companies offer a degree of anonymity to those who would prefer to keep their financial dealings kept secret. They are often used to conceal the identities of the buyers. Using loopholes is also another way to buy without having to give full details of your business and where the source of wealth 
or funds derives from. Take for example, the UK's company registry, Company House. The database that keeps the details of UK registered businesses has almost become a bit of a joke as it has been discovered that with only a few details and not necessarily genuine details, you can register your company. It has even been known that some people have used bogus names like the Tooth Fairy and left out key information at the time of registration with no one raising a red flag. This then adds another obstacle to tracking who the real people are behind the companies doing business in the UK. Close relationships between Russian oligarchs and Vladimir Putin. It's very interesting to see how many Russian oligarchs have connections to Putin. Many of them are either very close friends or work with him in a political position. Let's look at a few examples. Denis Botnikov, who is the deputy president of the Russian state-owned VTB Bank. He is currently being sanctioned mainly due to the influence of his father, Alexander Botnikov, who has been the director of Russian's intelligence service, the Federal Security Service, FSB, since 2008, and is believed to be one of Putin's closest aides. Kirill Shamilov is Russia's youngest billionaire and is the son of Russia's bank shareholder Nikolai Shamilov a long-term friend of Mr. Putin. Mr. Shamilov was also previously married to Mr. Putin's daughter, Katerina Tikhanova. Russia's bank is one of the Russian banks that has been sanctioned by Boris Johnson. Petr Fradkov, since 2018, has worked to transform Propsia's bank into the bank that serves the defence industry and supports state defence contracts. In his role, he has held work meetings with Vladimir Putin and participated in roundtable discussions in international forums, in which he forecast the bank's long-term strategic plans for supporting the Russian defence industry. Promsia's bank oversees 70% of state contracts by the Russian Defence Ministry. Promsia's bank was targeted in the first round of sanctions announced by Boris Johnson and is critical in the Russian defence sector. Examples of oligarchs Apart from the three just mentioned, here is a list of other Russian oligarchs and the wealth they have accumulated. Oleg Deripaska makes his money from aluminium. Estimated net worth $2.9 billion. Mikhail Friedman makes his money from oil. Estimated net worth $12.6 billion. Mikhail Khodorkovsky, founded Menatep Group, estimated net worth $8 billion. Vladimir Potanin, president in Teros Holding Company, estimated net worth $22.7 billion. Roman Abramovich, owner of Chelsea Football Club, estimated net worth $12.4 billion. The list is endless, but as you can see, the position of oligarchs and the company they keep has seen them generate wealth beyond imagination. What is the UK doing about it? With the growing conflict from Russia on Ukraine, it has forced the hand of the UK's political leaders to impose sanctions and update their systems to tackle money laundering from Russia. It was announced by Kwasi Kwarteng who is the Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, that the following measures will be put in place. A register of properties owned by overseas investors, in theory preventing them from disguising their identities, will be made more transparent. Company's house will also be upgraded to improve the quality of information available from its database. And measures will be taken to strengthen unexplained wealth orders which gives law enforcement bodies the power to seize assets where they suspect criminality may have occurred. Boris Johnson also announced the move to freeze assets of Russian oligarchs, which has prompted many wealthy Russians to sell off their assets, 
and move the proceeds to other jurisdictions. Super mansions and super yachts are on the main hit list, and it has been reported that many super yachts have been seen flooding into the Seychelles as a way to hide them from seizure. And over the last couple of days, this has resulted in Roman Abramovich putting Chelsea Football Club up for sale, which he owns, to the amount of £3 billion. He has, however, offered to donate this money to the Ukrainian Relief Fund to support the Ukrainians in this crisis. Even though the UK government are now making moves to clamp down on the dirty money coming in the country, it does make me think. How didn't they know about this before? Russian money has been used for over two decades to buy houses and other luxury goods, especially in London. So to act surprised at how many Russians own properties here is a little hard to believe. Either way, implementing more procedures and sanctions can only be a good thing, right? Well, there you have it. What is a Russian oligarch? where a lot of their money was generated from, and did money laundering have anything to do with it? Please tell us in the comments section if you think Russian oligarchs need to be sanctioned, and if you think the UK government is doing all they can to clamp down on this problem. Now for the special announcement mentioned at the start of the video. We have now launched our very own courses for you to take a more in-depth look at a variety of subjects such as Introduction to AML, Beneficial Ownership and Customer Risk Rating, for example. So make sure you visit our website for further details and let us help you connect the dots in KYC. Thank you for watching the video and if you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe to watch more amazing videos.